Hey, how's it going everybody? Are you looking for a dungeon master? Well, if you'd be interested in joining, uh, bringing a group to together to learn how to play or to start playing Dungeons and Dragons, I'm free. Uh, I've been DMing now for about, settle down key, six months and uh, I have a main group and we have created our own version of the Forgotten Realms. Uh, basically runs off uh, settle down basically runs like standard uh, forgotten rounds but with a few tweaks here and there a uh, few extra gods a few gods not in there so if you'd be interested in me running a game for you uh, listen to the story I'm about to tell you and if that sounds like something you'd enjoy then uh, leave a comment down below and we'll get back to you but I hosted my first online game the other week uh, I found a group of players and uh, we all arranged to meet up and I decided uh, as soon as it was the first game I was going to run online for new players I would run a pre-written module and the one I got recommended was a wild sheep chase which actually turned out to be a wild goat chase but we'll get into that so I got my four players uh, one from Italy uh, one from Luxembourg and two from UK with uh, the same as me. They rolled up a a rogue, sorry not rogue, a monk, a sorcerer with very high decks, uh, a voodoo a cleric based off a voodoo priest, and a I think it was an Asamir barbarian. I'm not 100 percent sure. I said to them they could have uh, any any options they wanted. I didn't want to, this was just going to be a, a fun session. Uh, Many played for laughs, and hope and you know we, we wasn't going to get into a big rules argument or anything. If they said that's what it was, I'd just say yeah. Uh, I kind of regret that. Cause some of the stuff I was looking at and thinking, really, does that work like that? Oh, yeah. Never mind. So uh, the party enters Waterdeep and the way it was set, they had come in just after my other group had left and they were actually going to be working for the GBU, which is the other player, my other group's adventuring agency. And uh, of course the first question I'll get asked is, what does the, what does the GBU stand for? And the, of course, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly and they had uh, they arrived outside it's an old stone building and the <coughs> symbol for the GBU is a halberd a rapier and a warhammer all in front of a elephant's head and that's on a metal swinging sign outside and of course and uh i said to them before again like please please do not burn it down okay my th this is my other group's adventuring agency please do not destroy <laughs> please do not destroy my players stuff but which they didn't so they knock on the door and uh, they are greeted by a young blonde girl called ella Ella is uh, when my players started their adventuring agency they said uh, they wanted employees and they thought hey you know let's uh, uh, I thought okay no problem let's do, let's do a job interview and I went to a website that generated random NPCs and uh, when it got to the clean, uh, the maid and the cook we Ella uh, I randomly generated Ella and I think she's 14 I think she's 14 and she'd just come from an orphanage and, and go oh you're hiring for your maid now this is what we would like and uh, she go oh what would that and go oh how, how good is she at cleaning and I thought All right, well what would that come under um, sleight of hand for the broom 
and uh, of course she's got terrible decks to it, terrible decks, rules an at one and she ends up knocking over their suit of armour in the corner and leaving a, a path of utter destruction in her wake. But it, but they enjoy it, she's, a neutral, she's neutral good and they found her so sweet and nice, but we'll, we'll give her a job, you know, we'll find someone else to clean up the mess that she leaves behind after cleaning and she welcomes them in and uh, they come into the room there's display cases towards the right side of the room and there are a line of chairs on the other side and some tables and things in the middle but at the back of it at the far back of the counter is a short human girl with raven hair and a white rabbit uh, on her shoulder and this is Gif, this is Ella's sister and she is their lawful evil uh, lawful evil receptionist if you've ever seen a British TV program called My Hero uh, it, it's the equivalent of Mrs Raven and uh, she's actually uh, she was randomly generated and I instantly loved this character as soon as I saw that they were they were hiring for a receptionist and this lovely uh, they, they, they're going to love this one uh, she interviewed very well, <laughs> and uh, yeah, go, well, here's what we do: we'll put you on hold. We want to interview a few more people first, but um, we we'll interview a few more people first. But just wait there; we'll see if there's anyone else. And she proceeded during the interview to go to the corner, and then she made, she's caught hold of a rat, and she's got a knife, and she's going, like, tss, 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 and the rat's like trying to dodge and then halfway through the second the next person being interviewed you just hear got it <laughs> and look over and she's like got a decapitated head of the rat and uh, what proves to be the final uh, the final the final approval for her interview was the fact she uh, the, the next candidate was just awful and boring and they said look if you can get rid of her then Feel free to. And then uh, you've got the job, and of course she's gotten, <laughs> she's gotten her knife and she's got a rat's head and she's gone charging at the uh, the interviewee and she's gone running out of the building. Oh, sorry, cat wants to go out. Very awful close off of my face there. So they go up to the window. Uh, they go up to GIF, and, uh, and she's very blunt with them to say the least uh, other way cat <laughs> she's very blunt with them to say the least uh, it's a case of name oh my name is a I could not remember the players names I really need to take those down in advance uh, name uh, profession how close are you to your family and of course go oh well I have family here and I have family it's like, oh well I have a brother and a mother but I don't speak to them too often like, no 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 not how not I don't want to help. I don't want to know how you get on with them. Just how physically close you are. It's very expensive sending your body parts back to your family. <laughs> of course, the the players are like okay. <laughs> so they answer they answer her questions. Goes right. Go sit over there. Don't, don't don't accept a cup of tea or coffee. Don't touch the guinea pig. <laughs> And that they look in the court. They look to the far side of the counter, and there is a tan guinea pig uh, with a cage on top of it, held down by a book, no actual base in it. And then a like a a, a devil's trap underneath it. And of course, when I've finished describing that to them, they're like, "Oh yeah, we best leave that alone." Which I'm very disappointed with. Uh, the the guinea pig is. <laughs> The guinea pig is something my other group acquired, and uh, they thought they'd keep it as a pet. Uh, none of them accept the cup of tea or coffee from Ella, which I was also disappointed about. So I did ask them, did anyone want a cup of tea or coffee? Uh, no, no, it's fine, it's fine really. And it was a good thing they didn't, because as, uh, as they were waiting in the corner, uh, a person wanting a contract fulfilled came in, and he does accept a cup of tea or coffee and 
Ella proceeds to pour tepid hot coffee into his lap. Ella, hey, probably good thing we didn't have that. Uh, they did have a quick wander over to the display cases. Uh, a couple were locked. Uh, one of the display cases had an arcane lockbox. Uh, that display case was locked. They did not get have a look in that. There are a few other items, uh, a few weapons that I might have let them use, but uh, they didn't ask about that. And then there was another display case that was open with a big sign that said "Touch at your own risk." Uh, and they there was the jester's hat that I mentioned in the previous video, and a few other things that I can't quite remember, which no one wanted to touch, which was also bit disappointing but after they've uh, been waiting there for a little while a gif shouts over to them oh by the way uh, the bosses are away so I can't fulfill your uh, enrollment process so you have to come back next week after they've been sat waiting there for an hour or so of course uh, players aren't too impressed by this but fortunately before a big argument breaks out Another bang at the door. Aha, that sounds like the plot. They open up the door and a sheep comes running in and starts knocking over all of the furniture. And it's got a scroll in its mouth. And this was probably the biggest mistake I made running this module. So I talked about it with the players afterwards. Uh, I ran it, I pretty much ran it as written. And it was an eight hour speak with animals spell and uh, only one player could speak with the sheep and a couple a few play the other players said they felt a bit left out so if i if i run it again i'll probably make it because uh, the sheep it turns out the sheep is a wizard who's been transformed by his apprentice with his uh, rod of transmutation And if I, if I run it again, I'll probably make the wizard just telepathically talk to the players so everyone could interact with it. But they, they didn't. But I ran it as written. But big mistake. And uh, he begins to tell the players that, you know, my my apprentice, I, I think it was Khalid? It might have been Khalid. Uh, has taken over my... Um, has taken over my home. He's taken all my things. He's transformed me into this. He's made me stand in, a, in my garden and eat gra nothing but grass for two years. <laughs> and the players are like, right, okay. And I can see they're, not, they're starting to not believe this. They're not sure whether this is just more world building from me. But then there's another bank at the door. And uh, another player goes, opens up the door, and there's this huge half orc stood there. Have you seen my sheep? The players are like, uh, pardon? And this is Grosh. And that uh, he's been sent here by Khalid to retrieve the wizard sheep. And they're like, and uh, no, there's no, no, no sheep here. No sheep here. Uh, we saw it come in here. My dog's tracked it here. And they look behind him and there's three large dogs with an unusually intelligent look in their eye and behind them is a figure in a brown robe but it pulled down low so they cannot see his face and they 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 try to bluff him but there's this isn't going to work he's tracked him he's tracked him here and the half orc attempts to push his way in and one of the characters managed to intimidate him to the point where, where he backed off but he then proceeded to send his dogs in because uh, cause he's seen the sheep in the background the sheep's done the right I made a stealth check for the sheep and he rolled a one uh, and so uh, scryed his legs sticking out from the back of the table so uh, he sends his dogs in and the figure in the brown robe pulls his hood back uh, to reveal he's a bear, also with an unusually intelligent look in his eye. And the due to the intimidation check, 
This probably should have been a lot harder back than it actually was, but I did allow him to make the make the monk was quite threatening and quite devious as you'll find out later. He uh, the dogs come in and they t and they try to drag the sheep out. The play uh, roll for initiative. The monk then proceeds to pick up the first dog and hurl it back out the door. Animals are not allowed inside or in shops or something. I don't know, it's quite funny. So they manage they manage to kill the dogs and the bear goes down eventually. The sorcerer did a lot of the damage. I think he had some kind of magic item. Probably should have checked. But oh well, we, they were having fun. So they, uh, the half orc goes running, and then they get talking with the wizard, whose name is Shinebright. And they say, and he gives, I'll, I'll give you a magic item each if you'll help me. I'll write a letter of recommendation. I'll pay your entrance fees to this adventuring agency. Just please, for the love of God, help me. Change me back. I'm sick of eating grass and buttercups. So the players agree, and uh, they head, they head out of Waterdeep. And uh, shine, but oh, excellent! On the way, uh, I can tell you about all the research I've been, I've been doing for the last two years as a goat. As a, sorry, as a sheep, I'm getting myself confused. And and they go, what kind of research have you, have you been doing as a sheep? He goes, well, I've been uh, well, I've been lying down on the grass, and then after an hour, I've been moving off the grass, then eating the grass, and then analysing its tenderness, brownness factor, and uh, its chewiness. So I like. He then goes into great detail, telling the sorcerer. For I think he went on for about nine or ten hours describing the uh, nine or ten hours worth of studies. It was only a couple of hour trek to get uh, to his man to his mansion. It was only a couple of two hours, but the whole time he said him, I lied down the grass for X number of hours, and after that I ate something. It was this kind. It was this kind of brown, and the and the sauce was like not in like the player wants to kill himself kind of way, but as in the characters like, oh god, kill me! Why? Why am I the only one? <laughs> Why am I the only one with this speak with animals spell? And they had gotten to this point in the session a little, a little bit more quickly than I thought they would. So I decided that I'd, I'd plan two random encounters if they had uh, got a bit further than I thought they would. So I added two things in that wasn't actually in the module. The first one was an in uh, they were crossing, coming up to a stone bridge. <clears throat> and there's like a small toll booth on the side and as they approach they're stopped by a troll and the troll comes comes out and uh, demands a few bronze pieces for them to pass like well, well, you can't charge you don't and the troll pulls out from its dirty satchel a proclamation from the local lord giving him rights to this bridge this is officially his bridge by law. He even pays taxes on it. And all the characters are like, seriously, is it real? Is it, yeah, make a check if you like, and the make a check. Yeah, it's real. And go, or give me go. And the idea, the idea for this was for the players to have a laugh and go, yeah, that's a sheep, not a goat. And, but I think they thought I just got confused. But my idea behind it was the troll. The the troll thinks all animals like that. A goat. It's a free Billy Goat's craft joke. And it was at that point everyone assumed our sheep was now a goat. And the player from Luxembourg, I, English wasn't his first language. Uh, he offers uh, as they're on the they they pay the troll, and as they're heading on, the player says to me. Uh, does, does the goat want some cheese? I'm like, what? I was like, what is he trying? What is he trying to give the goat? And I should, I should have looked this up. Uh, I go, okay, yeah. He kept going on about the cheese. I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, okay, yeah, fine. He go, oh, I haven't had cheese in years. I've just had a, uh, I've just had grass and buttercups. Okay, I'll, eat, I'll have some cheese. So he eats some cheese. 
Uh, they make their way forward and they have another en another encounter of a fairy whose cat is stuck up a tree. A, a fairy in the form of an eight year old girl. And her cat stuck up a tree and our barbarian feeling very heroic climbs up the tree and comes face to face with a sabre toothed cat. And he quickly kind of jumps down, and runs, <laughs> runs back to the road, and the, the entire party go careening after him, leaving this poor defenseless cat up the tree. They do bump into the fairy a little while later, and uh, two of the players thought it was funny. Two of the players wanted to stab the fairy. The two players, uh, as um, the encounter was originally planned. The two players that found it funny received a gift, and it was uh, two scrolls. Now, roll for these randomly. There was a scroll of Thunder Wave and a scroll of Mending. Yeah, there you go. And I have my right. Do you want the left hand or the right hand? <laughs> and of course, they pick the cleric. Got the Mending, and the sorcerer got the Thunder Wave. So they. That filled out a bit of time, and they proceed on, and they get to the play the. It's not really a wizard's tower. The wizard's mansion is essentially a tree house spread across four different, three different trees, and there's a platform in each tree, and a ramp connecting each one. Made of uh, wood, uh, made of tree bark and vines and branches, and uh, one or two small houses at the bottom. Uh, to accommodate servants. It's at this point they realise that, that uh, uh, Shine Bright informs them that the guards have all been transformed into uh, animals, and that's the re uh, that's why the dogs are in attacking so intelligently, because they did struggle with those a little bit, and the bear. So uh, well, the source says, well, I'll. Oh, I'll cast invisibility myself, and because they want to get the rod, uh, the transmutation rod. That's how they're going to change this guy back. So they say, "Well, I'll, I'll cast transmutation myself, and I'll sneak in, and I'll get the rod back, and the rest of you guys wait here." Okay, no problem. So the other players wait on the edge of the clearing as the sorcerer makes his way up to the first platform. And he comes, this first platform is uh, essentially a garden. And before that he's gone up there, Shine Bright has warned him to stay away from the pond. Uh, this wasn't actually in the module I added this, <coughs> so I thought it was a little bit too easy. Uh, and he sees... Khalid lying on a sun lounger and uh, two two dogs playing with some giant dice and three monkeys uh, up in a tree uh, just to the side he kind of was just like sneaking past him he goes right, I, I sneak up I sneak up to the guy and uh, I see if I, I see if he's got the wand uh, the rod and I go yeah sure but uh, make me a stealth check first uh, to see if you can get past everything and he realises dogs find his own perception and I think I scared the crap out of him because just as he's reaching just as he's getting up to Khalid he, Khalid sits up and the player's face is like keep it down he bellows at the dogs so he doesn't he doesn't find the rod on the wizard on the wizard's apprentice. So he continues to the second platform, it's a workshop, uh, living quarters. Doesn't find it there. Makes his way to the third platform. It's at this point it all starts to go to hell down below. As he's making his way up and through the second platform. Uh, the characters have positioned themselves outside of uh, an outhouse and it's at this time a bear that comes out of the outhouse after having taken care of business and I go right all you guys you're going to need to 
you need to roll stealth. Cleric gets a nat one. Literally, <laughs> clapped his, falls through the bushes in front of this bear. Uh, right, but everyone rolls initiative. And uh, the bear, the bear takes a good few chunks out of the cleric. But uh, eventually, I think I think it was the monk that took it down, and the barbarians charged off to the first platform. Of course, it's at this point that the alarm goes off. Uh, the sorcerer is making his way to the third platform. Khalid jumps up, casts expeditious retreat on himself, and starts to run to his bedroom on the third platform, which is also where the sorcerer is heading. And now it's a race. But of course the sorcerer does not know this. The cleric and the monk come up to the first platform to support the barbarian. He's just finished taking care of the dogs and almost been killed by monkeys throwing stuff at him. He goes, it's not poo, no, don't worry, it's rocks. But unfortunately this also set off what was inside the pool. And that, uh, scrub it, an enormous crocodile coming out of the pool. This is what I added to try and balance things out. I had to change the stats for it, but I think I reduced it to, I think it's like 3d8 or 2d10, I reduced it to just a 1d10. Otherwise it would have absolutely butchered them because they'd already taken quite a bit of damage. So the cleric and the barbarian are tied up dealing with this giant crocodile and the monk has gone off in search of the sorcerer. As the sorcerer is entering the third platform, Khalid has shot past him, grabbed the magical rod and zapped the bed with it. And then I described the bed starting to change shape. Uh, and he goes, do I know what it's trying to change into? Go, yeah, it looks like a dragon. Uh, it had the, the bed had a dragon head at the front and the bed sheets are becoming wings. I was right, I used my thunder wave. <laughs> Khalid and the dragon are smashed back against the walls. And the sorcerer runs <laughs> to reunite with his party. The monk's coming up by, and uh, after having cast darkness on himself. The monk uh, literally sees this shot of darkness going past him. It's like, what, what the hell? Uh, so this time the cleric has finally finished off. He's like gotten his... I think it's like a Shoruken fist going like, Ew. very popular. Shoruken fist in the, into the crocodile's mouth and just and like blowing its head off and like blood everywhere. The sorcerer emerges back out onto the third platform, the garden, having reunited. And from the bedroom, from the roof of the bedroom on the third platform, emerges this bed in the shape of a dragon. This was really cool. This had a um, it had a breath weapon, a splinter breath. It, ex it essentially fired splinters at you. It was quite nasty. It did a hell of a lot of damage. I thought, yeah, this would be a really cool battle. Everyone had already taken a bit of damage, so it was going to be close, but they could probably make it. And I, I think it must be watching dice camera action because he cut. I think it was whole person on the cler on the young apprentice. Fails to save. That one, so I described him falling, falling off the bed, and standing splat. Yeah. So, so, do you surrender? Never. Of course, he's taking the full. He's taking the full damage, and that basically put him at death's door. And then, of course, Sorcerer gets the rod. Now what he didn't know, it was very dangerous to use the rod, he just used, uh, the, rod, the rod was damaged and there's a chance it can backfire. Uh, rolled the chance, didn't backfire and I described the bed falling out of the sky and crashing into the outhouse. Which was where the magical reward was located. So then they had the fun of lifting, uh, lifting the bed out and trying to sort through to find their magical reward. It's at this time that the monk dropped the bombshell on the party saying, you do know cheese is poisonous to goats 
Yes, I am that popular. You do know cheese is poisonous, go. I'm like, showing bright's like, what? <laughs> change me back, 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 change me back. The reason Khalid had changed his 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 master into a goat was his master was not teaching him anything. His master was an elf. And he said, tomorrow I will teach you. Khalid was middle-aged at this point. He was about 40, 50. Khalid didn't have a spare century to learn his magic. And this had annoyed the monk. And he said, oh, he goes, we'll change you back. Providing you teach your apprentice some actual magic. So he's trying bright promises. Uh, but the way the module worked, it wouldn't allow a guarantee whether the word the rod would work correctly but the players did some very quick improvising the cleric was a knowledge cleric so he prayed for they've got an ability to like pray for inspiration or something to basically pray for knowledge to see if he can fix this and he had the mending cantrip as well so, uh, the DC they had to get, or the ability check they had to get was quite high. So after everything they'd done, I essentially decided, right, there's a one in, they'd done a lot, so I said, right, there's a two in three chance this is going to work. And I go, just, just draw me a D6. And I decided if it was a one or two, shine bright, it would <laughs> explode free <laughs> just I, I describe shine bright you know stereotypical wizard the blue robes with stars and moons and a big pointy hat and of course he gives them their rewards uh, there was uh, the outer gleam daggers uh, some feather tokens and an immovable rod in the toilet and of course I hadn't thought about that beforehand. And one of the players goes, there's an immovable rod in the toilet. Yeah. But a good time was had by all. Probably not doing it justice. Because I haven't actually taken any notes for this. But if you are looking for a DM, looking to run you one shot, so I'd also be interested in running a long, long campaign. If a fun, less serious campaign is what you're looking for, drop me a message below in the comments and uh, take care.